Hey guys, it's Sarah from Halftone, and today we're going to be looking at layers in After Effects. So let's get into it. For starters, if you remember last time on the basics of After Effects tutorial, we covered the panels of the interface, including the assets panel, the viewport, and the timeline, along with some of the effects panels over here. Today, we're going to primarily be focusing on assets and the timeline. And the reason why is because each asset appears differently on the timeline. So it's important to note how the assets work and how they function in the timeline. So first we're gonna wanna import some assets and I have a video for us to use. I just hit Command I for import and I hunt down the file and it's just an MOV. And as you can see here, this video file has audio and you're able to toggle the audio on and off. There are also these other little checkboxes that we can take a look at. So this lock checkbox lets you lock the layer so that you can grab assets that might be underneath it. And here, this little drop down opens up the basic effects of every asset. So mostly transform. And if you have audio, it lets you adjust the levels as well. As you can see in transform, we're able to adjust the anchor point, the position, the scale, rotation, and opacity. And just to go over anchor point, anchor point is where the center, quote unquote center of the asset is, but sometimes it can be off center. If for example, you make a new asset and you want the anchor point to be at the middle of the asset so that you can rotate it around the center, then you might have to adjust where the anchor point is. So here I'll hit A to open up anchor point and then move it over like so, and then down and roughly have it at the center. And then with a line, I just put it in the center of the canvas or the composition. And then as you can see here, we have a shape layer, which is different from a solid. A solid can often be confused for a shape and it can often act like a shape, but the way that they function with masks is very different. And so a solid will always take up the surface area of the composition, but a shape will not. You can make a shape look like a solid, but ultimately a solid takes up the entire size of the canvas and it will take whatever color you assign it from the get-go. So we have a medium orange solid and as you can see it took up the entire composition and it also shows up as red on the timeline, while the shape shows up as blue. So that's a good way to delineate them. As for masks, we won't be getting too deep into masks that could be an entirely different video on its own, but just for the basics of solid versus shape, a solid can take a mask just by using the shape tool while the layer is selected. And so now it just looks like a square, even though it is a solid. You can see that it now has a mask, mask applied to it. But if we try that same exact tactic by selecting the shape layer and creating a square, it will just create a new rectangle or whatever shape you have going on. But in order to get a mask onto a shape layer, the way we do that is, first I'm gonna delete this rectangle and then go into layer, mask, new mask. And then you can adjust the points from there. Looking spicy. All right, I'm gonna delete that mask. And now because we've gotten into so many shapes and layers, you can see that by creating our solid layer, it's been added to the assets panel. This is covered in the first video, but as you can see, the main comp, the composition that we have open is also in the assets panel. Any composition that you make, any pre-comp, any composition, what have you will appear in the assets panel. Some cool things about shape layers is that you can also do gradient shapes and other cool features, which can be found by opening up the dropdown and going into here. And here is where each of these rows delineates delineates a tool that can use a keyframe. In Path, we have these three tools that can have keyframes and be animated, and then we have strokes and we have fills, and I am going to get rid of the stroke, so I selected the stroke row and I deleted it. And now we just have the bright green fill. And I do not like that green color whatsoever. I want a rainbow gradient for whatever reason. So the way that we do a rainbow gradient is by selecting the shape layer and going up to add. 
And then here you can find a bunch of different options. This first section is primarily for creating additional shapes within that layer. And then down here is involves the color of the shape, whether that be the stroke or the fill. And right now we want a gradient fill, so we're gonna add a gradient fill. And then you can also see that our regular fill is still there, but if we move that regular fill above the gradient fill, it'll change the color to the original green but we don't want that and we can delete the fill. Before we delete the fill, um, another thing to note is that you're able to change the blending mode on each shape in a shape layer. You can find them here. So we don't need that fill, so I'm deleting it. And then in the gradient fill, I'm going to colors, edit gradient. All right, so we have our gradient created. I'm gonna hit okay. But you can see that our gradient is looking kind of squashed and that's because the start and stop anchor points are close together just by default. Usually they're about like 100 pixels apart and so I'm going to move the X axes. And then because I put the gradient from one end of the canvas to the other, I want to elongate the shape of my rectangle and so to do that I go up to the rectangle path to size and then I uncheck the link icon so that we can adjust the width and the height separately instead of keeping the aspect ratio. If you have that lock enabled it'll keep the aspect ratio. Looking spicy. All right, but here's the thing. I wanna animate this gradient so that it goes through the gradient and repeats. And so to do that, I'm going back into the gradient and I'm adjusting it again. And so I doubled the size of the gradient so there's two reds two purples two blues etc and i want to sweep through the animation since my canvas is 1920 width wise i am setting the size of the rectangle to 1920 wide and then i aligned it to the left and then also aligned it to the bottom of the canvas perfect but i also want this gradient to move and so i'm changing the name of the layer by hitting enter and saying gradient layer and then I'm duplicating it and then hitting P to open the position and I'm moving the position so that the red meets where the red is on the middle of the gradient bar. But here's the thing, this is like a really bootlegged way to do it but to show you how to use adjustment layers we're gonna leave these both in this canvas, in this composition. I'm closing them, and to have it move from one end to the other, I'm going to create an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers are super cool. They are completely empty, for one, and then whatever animations we put on this, whatever effects, will affect everything below it unless it's something to do with movement or the transform effects. So those transform effects, in order for those to affect the layers below it, we have to parent them. What I want is for this, this adjustment layer to move from here to off screen. I'm going to go down to my gradient layers, I have two of them now, and I'm going to link them to the adjustment layer where the parent link option is. Excellent. So now they move, but I want this to end at the edge there. So I'm going to move the adjustment layer back a bit and perfect. I'm going to move this to the end of the video, but you can see that the video is not as long as the timeline. The video actually, I want it to end after I finish talking. So about there. So to do that is very simple. We select the layer and we go to the edge of the bar. Click and drag it. Another way to do this is to isolate this layer. And so to do that, we double click and it opens it up in a new viewport. 
where it has its own timeline and everything on there. And you can see that my marker is there, which is here on the timeline down below. And I want it to clip it there. And so I hit this right side bracket and it's looking good. I can also go ahead to the beginning to just before I speak and the marker moves. And then that's where I want it to start. And so then I clip it here and it brings it back to zero seconds on the timeline. And so now we go back to our composition by going into the viewport, hitting there. But now the timeline is still very long. It runs off of the actual video and then it's just blank space. What we're gonna do here is grab the edge of the timeline here, the work area end, and hold shift as we drag it and it'll snap it to this keyframe and this end point. So let's say this is the video that we want to color correct. So let's say this is the video that we want to color correct. Excellent. All right, so now we have our adjustment layer and it's affecting these two layers, even though these do not have any keyframes on it. The only keyframes are on the adjustment layer. Because the cool thing about adjustment layers is that it's a non-destructive way of editing. All of the keyframes that you want to affect multiple layers are on one layer rather than all of those individual layers. We could have put uh, our positioning keyframes onto the gradient layers, but we just put them on the adjustment layer, so they're constrained to that layer. But you know what? We also want to do some color correction. The thing about color correction is that we can do those on adjustment layers, but I only want it to affect this bottom layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new adjustment layer and it's just above this video. We're gonna go into effects, color balance. And here I wanna cool it off a bit. So we're going to decrease the mid-tone reds. But you notice that we didn't parent link that to the color correction movie. So it is not necessary to parent link effects on adjustment layers to the layers that you want it to affect. You may have also noticed that we have other toggle options on the checkboxes aside from the lock feature. And so over here we have motion blur. The thing about motion blur though is that it is a pain on the rendering process. Rendering can take significantly longer when you have motion blur enabled, so it gives you the option to check it off so that you can render faster. There's also this option on whether or not the layer affects anything below it, but since adjustment layers affect everything below it, those two have the toggles up on them. And then over here is 3D layer. So this will allow you to turn specific layers into 3D layers and then edit them on the X, Y, and Z axes. And this little squiggle is another way to parent and link layers. So let's say that instead of adjustment one, we want to link it to adjustment two, but we want to keep it at adjustment one. Another useful way of working with layers is to create guide layers. So now we're going to be working with text and snapping them to guide layers so that they're all the correct margins. So to create a text layer, I'm going to use command T. Alright, so we have our text and I added a little drop shadow so that we can see it better when it goes into the light because I want it to be down here. But I also want to have it on a specific margin distance and so I'm going to open up the rulers, which I did by tapping. And so with the rulers, I'm going to click and drag to the 100 mark on both sides. But for this one, we're going to eyeball it a bit. That's good. And you can move them around. And these lines will not show up on your final export. It snaps to those guidelines and perfect. But maybe we want this cool gradient text combo to be used by other people, but we want them to know that they can snap the text to these guides because maybe they're not familiar with After Effects and might not know that these guides will not export and can also work as a guide for other layers. So to do that, we're going to make another text layer and just let people know that this is a guide layer that will not export. But to make this a guide layer, we're going to go into layer, guide layer. You can see that we now have this little hatch mark 
on the layer name, and that means that it is a guide layer and will not affect the export. But you can also see that we can move it around, but we don't want people to move it around. So we're gonna lock that layer so that other people can't mess with it. And there you have it. That is the basics of layers in After Effects. There is a lot more to go over. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, let me know what you wanna know and I can talk about it for a bit. So have fun in After Effects and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.